So I just want to quickly cover uh, a few things around maintenance on the outside of the car. Um, one thing, you know, eventually you're going to need to buy new tyres and uh, it's a conversation that comes up fairly often around what you should do. Um, any tyre shop will do it. Uh, Tesla have tyres. Uh, they're not remarkably great value. You can get the same tyres uh, typically a bit cheaper. You can buy the Tesla OEM tyres, so they're marked with TO or T1 on the side. Any tyre shop can get them. They'll cost you a margin more, 100 bucks a tyre more, and they have foam liner in them that makes them quieter is fundamentally the only difference. Um, but if you're talking to a tyre shop or you're even you know stuck somewhere and you need a tyre repaired and they're going to lift the car, uh, I would make sure that whoever's lifting it has read the manual. There's a page in the manual all about lifting. It has a little picture in it and I'll be emailing these slides out again as, as mentioned and it's got a link to the exact page of the manual and shows you and the manual will show you exactly how and where to lift the car. Because the bottom's a battery and because the because there's a battery, you can't, you can't lift it on the battery, right? You'll damage the shell of the battery and ruin the car, basically, if you lift it in the wrong place. So along this edge, there are a couple of little circles along the, the, the sill of the car. Um, and they're where you should lift it on the face of those <coughs> little circular holes. Now, you'll, you'll find a lot of people saying, oh, you need special little lifting puck adapters. And you don't. They help in that you put those little things into the car and it makes a really nice, obvious spot to lift it from. But they're not necessary. Tesla themselves don't even use them. What you do need is a flat rubber surface that, that interfaces at the same point where those circles are, where those little holes are to lift the car. Um, because it's a fairly low car, um, some lifts and jacks and things won't fit under the car and they might have to do the work by just using a good old trolley jack and lift it up. Um, but make sure they're not using the, sort of, you know, the metal claw kind of st traditional old one that would go under a differential or something like that. They need to put a rubber block on it so it's a nice flat surface and lifting exactly where those circles are in each corner of the car. Um, so monitoring tyre pressures, we sort of talked about this a little bit. Um, the car's got tyre pressure sensors in it so it will tell you when the tyres are low. Uh, top it up, uh, if you forget how much air you should put in it. There's a sticker on the door frame here telling you exactly how much air, but every single one of them is 42 PSI. But it's written there for your information. That's also where you'll find the, you know, the VIN stamp and all that sort of stuff there. Um, yeah, so we've spoken about spare tyres from Tesla, so if you have any trouble, call the 1-800 number when I, I'll, I'll be getting in the car and doing a tour of the screen soon, um, and we'll show you that. But, um, yeah, you can get a loan, loan um, or where to find that phone number, the 1-800 number. It's on the service menu in the screen. Um, you can get loan, loan wheels and tyres from Tesla, and they'll come out, and they'll jack the car up and put them on in your driveway. Yes, it is much the same as RECQ or whatever. It'll go to a call centre in the US and then they'll sort of go through their list and find someone local to you to find someone to send out. Um, then the other thing is scheduled maintenance. So this is one of the joys of owning an EV is that the only scheduled maintenance is that the brake fluid needs testing every two years because the brake fluid goes off. Uh, it absorbs water and you know the water attracts rust and will rust out the inside of the brake system. So that needs checking every two years and replacing as necessary and there's a cabin filter that should be replaced every two years as well. So it's an air filter for the, the fresh air that comes into the cabin. Uh, some people have had issues with the cabin filter, particularly in damp weather, getting a bit mouldy and making the car a bit smelly. If, you, if your car smells like old socks, uh, in any less, anything less than two years, hassle Tesla about it. They'll give you a new cabin filter if you ask nicely. Luke, will the car remind you about those things? No. No, it won't. Uh, not that I'm aware of. And it should probably, particularly the brake fluid. I think you know, of all the things that you know that matter in a car, the tyres are pretty sorted out. I mean, you should check the tread and know how the tread indicators work, I suppose. Uh, so if you feel around the tyre and in one of the the grooves that run around the outside, you'll feel a little line in the bottom of those grooves occasionally. There's about six of them around the tyre. If those little lines that run you know across the face of the tyre are close to the surface, the tyre's worn out. And you need to check all of them right the way across the face of the tyre. If any of them, and you'll find particularly the inside one, you need to really reach inside and feel it. <coughs> if any of those are at the surface of the tyre, the tyre's worn out and you need a new one. Are there any run-free, run-flat? No, the, the, 
run flats need special rims as well. The, the profile of the way the tyres locked onto the rims slightly different, so you can't put run flats on it safely, reliably either. Not necessary. As broadly as we've said before, if you have a tyre pressure monitor, as these cars do, a normal tyre will get a screw in it, it will go flat slowly, you'll see that, you'll top it up, you'll get to a service centre and it'll all be fine before the tyre flies apart. The issue, you know, before tyre pressure sensors were a thing, uh, you know, in older cars and more basic cars, is that you'd have a screw in there and the tyre would get flat and you'd just keep driving until, and then you're driving on a flat tyre, the, the heat builds up in the tyre and just tears the outside of the tyre apart. And, you know, a small screw that you could have fixed turns into a blowout on the highway and a big deal. So, and you need a spare wheel and all that sort of stuff. With tyre pressure sensors, less of a problem. Twelve years I had my master and never had a Yeah, yeah, and that's not unusual. Um, yeah, it's, it's risk management. Um, so charge port is around here. There are some stickers inside, and I put one on my car. Whether you think it looks cool or otherwise is your own choice, but there are some free ones of those stickers in there. I did also I put it on just to show for today, but I do have a sticker under that that's got my phone number on it, um, as you know, people being able to contact me when I'm charging. Um, the wheel covers um, you'll find on a you know a newer uh, SR with um, the plastic wheel covers over the whole wheel. The newer ones are a bit hard to get. A, most tyre valves at a servo they're a bit hard to get on, uh, so you may have to either remove the whole wheel cover, and you can do that. You simply need to be violent to get them out. You put your fingers in the slots and just reef the whole cover off. Putting it back, make sure you line up where that valve is with the little hole that the valve goes through and slap it on. So sort of put it in place and then just slap it with your hand. Again, you just have to be violent. As long as you've got the alignment right and you've got the, you know, the valve lined up with the hole in the cover, it's fine. You just need to slap it on until it's all perfectly flush. If it's not sitting perfectly flush, it'll fly off in the highway and uh, not good. Yeah. Loaded ring in the middle that needs a bit of a harder slap than the rest. If that one's not in, that's when it'll come off on the highway. Yeah. So make sure it's really bedded in and looks curved in, like it sort of matches the curve of the wheel. Um, I have roof racks on this car. Um, they're good. They're tough. Um, they go into little. They've got little hooks that sort of go into a steel rail. They sort of go in this rubber gap and hook into the roof of the car. These are Tesla ones. They've been out of stock for six plus months. Um, there are some knockoffs that look almost completely identical. They are made by Yakima, um, so you know one of the big common roof rack brands. There are Rhino and a couple of others have got roof racks as well. They don't, rather than going into the roof slots like the Tesla ones, they've got little hooks that go into the door frames. I don't really like that because uh, it's basically putting the the pressure of the clamping onto the rubber seal of the window frame, which is not really what it's meant for. What about positioning? Like, because I've noticed you're up the front. Yeah, so the position's determined by where the, the gaps are in the, in the rail for the, the hooks to go into. Um, so they're not really mobile. It comes with some little bits of paint protection film, which you would have seen on the car before I put the roof racks on. There's little stickers where these feet sit, and that protects any dust that gets between the rubber foot and the car is protected by that film. Uh, and I have a tow bar, which um, I, I, I wanted and I put a fair bit of effort into working with the club. The club paid for it to be engineered, so it has, it's fully you know, ADR compliant and has an engineering report to say that, so it's fully legal in Australia. Tesla have promised their own uh, tow bar for a very long time and everyone's got sick of waiting, so we have a solution for that. Um, there's a few... There's installers around the country. Um, there's a company basically built off the back of um, us importing them and approving them that uh, distributes them in Australia now. Uh, it's, I think, it's normally 2,900, and I think they're, they're, they're doing them for 2,750 fitted, I think. There's about a 5% discount for so members. So the, there's a taper in the chassis to take that, isn't it? Yeah, so it's a, the, underneath, the, there's, there's a lot more to it than what you see there. There's a, there is a whole bar across the back under the car, and there's a socket that these fittings go into. 
So, uh, and, a, and a double locking mechanism that it snaps into in the bottom of the car oh, okay. uh, with a key and everything. Uh, yeah, so that, that, this is a, a, a tow and rack kit. So there's this, which you can use for a bike mm. rack. So it's got the two inch receiver in it. And there's a tow hitch as well. And up under the car, there's eyes to put the chains on uh, <clears> and, and the wiring harness for the lights and all that in there as well. So what towing capacity, please? A uh, thousand kilos. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, ball weight of a hundred kilos and um, lo and trailer load so of a thousand. you put that on yourself, do you, when you want to tow? Is that yep, yep. Is so there's a little cover under the bottom of the car with some quarter lock panel that comes off. Oh, okay. And you stash that um, and then snap that into the bottom of the car okay. and yeah, ready to tow. Thank you. What is, um, what's left on the car if you remove all the stuff you can take off the tow bar? Yeah. The bit that's left, how much weight does that add to the car? Whole kit's like 30 kilos, and I guess there's probably be, you know, I know the carton I think weighs 30 something kilos, and you know, and there's probably 10 in this and that. And so, a bit of weight yeah. added for, to the car for its life, yeah. An electrical side, yep. So, there's electrical, yeah, you know, typical, it comes with the kit mm -hmm. uh, that's installed. Okay. Uh, there's Scooters EV Services, is a local installer. Um, so, give him a shout, tell him you're a Tesla Club member and you want your 5% discount. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I can put it on and show you later well, if you're least, interested. Uh, but no charge for fitting the tow bar. Sorry? No charge for fitting the tow bar. Just for you doing it yourself, or yeah. doing the, the hitch bit yourself, yeah, yeah. So I really like this. There are other options. Uh, there are cheaper, slightly cheaper, like 500-ish dollar cheaper options that are bolt-on, mm -hmm. and you've got to sort of get up under there with a spanner and put a bolt through it and bolt it onto the car rather than it coming with this quick-release connector system. I think this is a lot easier and a lot simpler to deal with. Uh, bike rack certainly does. The ball, it's, it's, I guess, just right in the middle and it just manages to ignore the ball when you've just got the ball on. Um, but if you have the bike racks on and you're in reverse, then the car's just beeping at you the whole time. Can you see it in the camera? Yeah, yeah, that, it blocks, because you know, the camera's right there. If you've, got the, <laughs> if you've got a bike rack on, then yeah, you're sort of squinting through the bikes to see what's going on behind you a bit. Uh, so it is a bit of a trick to reverse it when you've got all that stuff on because the sensors are basically useless because they're already screaming at you and you can't cancel those in Australia, you can in the US. Uh, design rule compliance thing, I guess. Um, and yeah, and you can't see much out of the camera, so it can be a bit tricky. But you can get in a super, typical supercharger bay though. Um, I can back the supercharger, you know, like at, at Gimpy or whatever, the supercharger is a vertical thing there and you can back the bike right next to it. Just, you know, look in the mirrors and be careful. Can you roof they're not on all the time? No, no. I mean, I, they weren't on this morning. I just put them on while um, Anthony was doing his talk. Um, no, and as we were talking about before, aerodynamics, you notice things in an EV. You notice those little efficiency changes. I think if <coughs> your average, um, you know, four-wheel drive owner realised just how much fuel they were wasting on having their camper awning thing screwed on the side of the car, they wouldn't. Uh, it would have to be costing them 200 bucks a year in petrol. So, yeah, you really you notice these things. If you do the same trip back and forth with roof racks on, you know, um, I've done it before I got had the tow ball. I did a trip with a couple of mountain bikes and a tent on the roof. And then not long after, did basically the same trip with the bikes on the back. And there's a significant saving in having on the back. They still, as um, Nathan was saying, the load of them just being on the back of the car because the car is so slippery in the air comes over the car and down the back, if it then hits a pile of bikes on the back, that's still got a significant impact. Um, uh, that's about it. I've got some sunshades and stuff inside too, if anyone's curious what, how the sunshades work or look or anything like that. They're sitting on the bench inside. Uh, but I think we'll um, head inside. Uh, well, uh,